this. Oh, she is huge. It's some kind of banana spider. Look at those fangs. I'm trying to try and catch her. Along the western slopes of the Andes, there's a special place known as the Mindo Valley. In this 100 square mile chunk of northern Ecuador, the mountains intersect with the Chacoan lowlands, making this one of the most biodiverse habitats on the planet. Thousands of species thrive here, in what is literally a biologist's paradise. I am one such biologist, and ever since I was a kid, it's been my dream to come to South America to explore habitats just like this. Out here, under the cover of all this green, this area is teeming with incredible secrets. See, I've spent quite some time studying the natural world, and even in our literal backyard, some of the strangest creatures live out complex lives largely unseen by human eyes. This secret world runs parallel to ours, and out here in the tropics, I can't wait to see what it has in store. While I'm here though, I have a very specific mission. Over the years, I've worked with some of the most infamous spiders in the world, and have been training to tackle an arachnid that I've heard horror stories about since the second grade, the Brazilian Wandering Spider. Somewhere in these misty mountains lurks one of the deadliest spiders on the planet, and my mission is to find out if it's truly the monster it's been cracked up to be. We've arrived at the lodge, so I'm doing the only rational thing to do, and that is stepping outside look for bugs. It's, it's kind of funny how even in the tropics, the, the rules of exploring habitat are literally the same. There's cover to flip, stuff could be underneath it. There's vegetation, you check the vegetation for bugs. Like, even though these surroundings are so unfamiliar, it's like, oh, I know how to do this. And around every corner, we were seeing ridiculously cool stuff. The only problem is it got cut short when the sky decided to open up on us. This is the Ecuadorian problem. The endless supply of water means there are more species in a square mile of this habitat than just about any other biome on the planet, but it also means that the one thing you can count on is rain. Not much would move in this weather, so the only thing we can do now is wait. If there's a Brazilian wandering spider out there, it's not going anywhere. Well, we got rained out earlier, um, so I had to change into some dry clothes, but not a whole lot was moving. However, it is now dark and stuff is active. We're, we're even seeing stuff just around the cabin here. So I think this is, this is the time. So um, Harris, I don't know if you're ready. I definitely but am. But we're gonna head out into the forest, out into the Ecuadorian jungle after dark. Don't try this at home, kids. And we're gonna see if we can find any cool arachnids and hopefully, with any luck, we get the spider that I've wanted to see ever since I was a little kid. In drier clothes, we headed back out to explore. This works out because our target spider is gonna be easier to find after dark anyway. But it turns out, so is a lot of stuff here in the cloud forest. As plentiful as the odd creatures of this forest were during the day, it seemed to be tenfold once the veil of night fell. We didn't make it far from the lodge at all before we found our first insane arachnid. Evan just had the greatest freaking spot. Right here, you can see it, is probably one of the creepiest looking things I've ever seen. Wow. I've never seen one of these in my life. I'm not sure how it's gonna behave. I'm hoping I can get it in here. Are they fast? They are. Okay. I'm gonna just, oh, I see him. <sighs> wow. Look at that. Oh, this is a wood scorpion. And this is a crazy looking one. I said it's a whip scorpion, right? Well, what's funny is, evolutionarily, these are actually more closely related to spiders. But truthfully, they're actually in their own group. And the scientific term for one of these crazy looking animals is an amblypigid. They're named 
whip scorpions or whip spiders, depending on who you ask. But unlike their venomous cousins, the spiders and scorpions, these guys don't use any kind of venom. Their primary defense mechanism is gonna be that speed. And also, look up there in the front, you got some pretty nasty looking claws there. Now I would imagine if you try it really hard, you can get a pretty nasty pinch from one of these crazy creatures. Now, of course, as you can see right here, they have no intention of using it on humans. People are always commenting on how I handle just the creepiest looking things. The thing is to me, I mean, yeah, they're a little creepy looking, don't, don't get me wrong, but it's the weirdest stuff that always fascinates me the most. It's why I do these videos in the first place is to document some of the strangest and, and most unusual animals on the planet. And the thing is people don't usually get to see these crazy, weird looking little creatures. I actually get a lot of comments of people saying that they've never seen or even heard of some of the stuff that I feature here on the channel. And that's kind of the goal. When I say that I want to discover the secrets of the natural world, I really want to show people things about nature that they have actually never seen before. Because our planet is just full of all kinds of crazy stuff that we're not even aware of. So if you're enjoying seeing me work with all these creepy looking and sometimes even dangerous creatures, I would really appreciate if you left a like on this video. That'll do, it'll tell YouTube to surface this to more people just like you so that they too can learn about the incredible animals that they share the planet with. And plenty of unusual creatures were in the near future for us. To get up into the proper cloud forest, we had to trek a mile through cow pasture to the nature trails. But this region is so chock full of life that even in the disturbed farmland, I stumbled onto another crazy looking invertebrate. There is something on my face. Only question is, can I, where'd it go? He flew away onto that branch up there. <laughs> I think I'll probably reach him. Yeah, the benefit of being tall. Come here, buddy. I can, in fact, catch it. How cool is that? That is a lichen mimic walking stick, and it can fly. I have never seen flying walking sticks before. They fly now? They fly now. Wow, look at that thing. The uh, Ecuadorian jungle is just incredible. Oh, he spit up something too, like a grasshopper almost. What a weird creature. I love phasmids and this one's the weirdest one I've ever seen. So this is probably my favorite phasmid that I've seen. Whoa. And he is not happy. Not happy at all. A lot more active than I'm usually used to seeing. Usually I see him to kind of just creep along, but this guy scurries and then he's gonna do it. He's gonna do it. Is he gonna do it? Are you gonna chill now? Okay, well he's chilling now. Um, but look at this. Such an odd insect. You can see why it's called a lichen stick insect. Look at the look at the growths on them right there. That's all part of his exoskeleton, but it looks like moss or lichen or something. He'd probably blend in perfectly with the really moss covered trees out here. And that is exactly how it would survive in the wild. These are not really very well defended. They don't have biting mouth parts um, that will really damage you. They don't, some of them are equipped with poison. This one's not. Um, and they don't really have any like way to damage a potential attacker. So they rely on really cunning camouflage. And I actually spotted it because the thing is walking sticks aren't actually that smart. They'll sit on things they can't camouflage with. And they think that just because they're sitting perfectly still that no one can see them. But if it's sitting on a leaf, sorry, bud, you're gonna get caught. And that's exactly how we got this one. But we're gonna go ahead and let him back in the environment because we're not looking for walking sticks today. We're looking for giant spiders. But I will, uh, I will take this any day. We hiked into the night. Along the way, we saw no shortage of spiders. These bromeliad spiders share the nickname that some people give to the Brazilian wandering spider, the banana spiders. At a quick glance, they can even be mistaken for true wandering spiders. The sheer numbers we were seeing of them were concerning. The bromeliad spiders have such a similar role to the wandering spiders in the ecosystem that it might be that they're out competing their deadly counterpart in this area. That's good news if you're the average hiker stumbling onto these massive spiders, but bad news for me when it's my main target, and one of the key reasons I flew to Ecuador in the first place. We rounded a bend, 
and I saw something glinting from a leaf. I shine. Could this be our spider? I have a look at this. Oh, she is huge. Now, at first glance, this looks like a wandering spider. And honestly, this used to be classified as a wandering spider, but this is actually tropical banana spider or bromeliad spider. Have a look at that next to my hand. That is a gnarly spider right there. I'm gonna do really quick. So I'm gonna try and try and catch her so we can get her. Get a better look at her. Let's see. Oh, that'll work. Come on. Come on in. There you go. Awesome. All right, so she seemed to be a lot more comfortable on the leaf. Now, this is not a wandering spider. This is not something I'm worried about being like medically significant or dangerously venomous or anything. Um, but we've seen a lot of these today. And there's one thing that's for certain. It's that they act kind of like fishing spiders back home and they are ridiculously fast. I want to kind of get her on a place she's a bit more comfortable where she'll sit and actually stay put so I can actually show her to you. This is a banana spider. They can be found on banana plants or bromeliad. I actually don't know what this plant is, but because they're not herbivores, they're actually not going to be that selective about the plants they're sitting on. They're just found and associated with those kinds of plants, which is where they get their nickname. These guys are really cunning ambush hunters out here in the cloud forest and the other jungles they call home because what they'll do is like a fishing spider they'll sit on a leaf just like this and their front legs are extremely sensory these guys do have good vision but it's their front legs and those sensory organs in there that do the real magic these spiders are extremely extremely aware of their surroundings they're sitting on these leaves feeling every vibration right now she's sitting very very still but don't be fooled they're extremely extremely fast and that camouflage makes them look like part of a part of a plant or some kind of debris sitting on a plant so different prey items they see that they don't think it's a spider which is a fatal mistake by the time that insect or even probably a small frog realizes what this thing is this thing pounces grabs it and pumps a ton of venom ending that prey item's life there's another spider that shares the nickname of the banana spider that's the brazilian wandering spider something i'm hoping to see while i'm here in ecuador but I wanted to point out this spider particularly because they share that nickname. But look at this right here. This is not a spider that wants to do me any harm. In fact, not only is it not wanting to do me any harm, it's not a medically significant bite. This is not a deadly or seriously venomous spider. Now what I'm actually gonna do, is I wanna see if she'll actually cooperate and hang on to my hand really quick. Just in case you had any, any doubts about the dangerousness of this spider, I'm gonna show you that this is not a monster that's out to get you. All right, so she's moving around a lot more. I'm thinking what I could probably do is coax her onto my hand here. Hey, sweetie. Now that is a banana spider in my bare hand. But honestly, as you can see, she is very, very relaxed. And like even her like behavior right here, she's not like fleeing super quickly. I've seen these guys move. This is not a spider that is overly stressed, overly frightened, or overly fearful for her life. Obviously, I'm a much bigger animal than she is, so she's definitely a little spooked, a little concerned for her safety. But with any kind of free handling, the trick is to be respectful to the animal, and they'll usually be respectful towards you. She's just sitting there, calm, on my hand. And literally, the best thing I can compare this to is like large wolf spiders or like fishing spiders. Very fast when it wants to be, but once you get them to calm down, they, they kind of just sit there and figure you out. Take a look at her face there real quick, and you'll see she has those those four eyes right in the middle. I'm saying, Spencer, didn't, didn't, haven't you said that that's what a wandering spider looks like? And truthfully, these actually used to be classified in the same family as the Brazilian wandering spiders, but they actually were moved after more genetic data came out into a completely different family, which is kind of weird, right? Turns out, in a lot of these spaces, where we're seeing a lot of the banana spiders, the wandering spiders are a lot harder to find. And it's thought that these guys may have settled into a similar role in the ecosystem that a wandering spider would be taking up in this general environment here. Probably why we haven't seen any big like Brazilian wandering spiders yet is because this is what is replacing them. And when you see animals like that, that have very similar roles in the environment and very similar appearances, it's actually a case of convergence. Over millions of years, different spiders that come from different lineages have become very, very similar due to having very similar survival strategies in the wild. 
look how she's behaving. Not a spider that has ill will towards me. Just a really beautiful arachnid and a really awesome find out here in the jungle after dark. Even after hiking late into the night, we came up empty-handed on Brazilian wandering spiders for the evening. Weirdly enough though, I don't feel like it's a total loss. Getting hands-on with one of the other tropical banana spiders is something I've long dreamed of, and perhaps this video will spare a few of these amazing predators from being smashed. While they're in large numbers in the cloud forest, they still need to be protected and respected, because we can never be too sure what the world would look like if they were to disappear forever. And as we saw with this spider as she walked over my skin, they really don't have any interest in picking fights with humans, but are simple creatures just trying to make their way in the universe. Closer to home back in the US, we have our own giant spiders that run the forests after night falls, and I got a chance to see some mammoth ones in the forests of northern Texas. If you want to see that adventure, check it out right here. But until next time, don't forget to get outside and find your own adventure.